what's up fam and welcome back to my channel in case you guys see anything moving in my background it's my dog the q a questions i know i had comments i had posted on my instagram story questions you guys would like to ask and i didn't get so many questions so this will be a q a of get to know okay so those of you my name is Christina Sanchez. I am married. I have five kids, three girls, two little boys, and I am a stay at home full time parent slash content creator, beauty, makeup, lifestyle, and vlogger. Now, before I tell you guys about my life now, before I didn't vlog, I didn't really have the courage to do these types of things because I care so much about what other people would say and I would never trust myself into doing something that I really enjoy doing, which was vlogging and making content on social media, that side of that business, which is also very good because it's an extra income that you also can build while you're working from home especially if you're a full-time parent while i am doing all of that it's pretty hard because i am my own manager and i am my own self-employed person so at the moment i don't have a current job and i don't have any brand deals as of right now and i was hoping soon enough to get to that level which is a goal for me and as well as it's something that I've always wanted to achieve, especially when it comes to content creating. But little backstory, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I'll mention it again. So I am 31 years old. I am born in Brooklyn, New York. My parents, my mom and dad are from Puerto Rico. My dad is from Santurce, Puerto Rico, and my mom is from Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. My parents met when they migrated to New York, and that's how they met. And from then on, I don't know the whole story. I just know little bits and pieces, and then boom, that's how I was conceived. And we stayed in New York for about maybe, I would like to say, until I was like five years old, and then my parents decided to move. The reason for the moving and why my parents decided to move, one, because where we live, it wasn't the best place ever, I would assume. I mean, yes, we live with one of my mom's family members, but back then, if you were to look at it, people would assume that it was kind of like the projects. That's where all the poor and low class is. So pretty much I was a part of that life when I was little and um my parents couldn't afford rent a lot because the pricing in new york was super expensive super so my parents had to make a decision not only make the decision because new york was just pretty pricey because where we live was not the best environment when my mom would take us to school or we would go to church we will always see like people on drugs, prostituting, things of that. And I would witness it at such a young age. And I would always feel uncomfortable sometimes whenever my mom would walk us. And there would be like some people that knew my dad because I had a grandpa that had a garage not far from where we lived, we used to stay. And I don't know, I just felt like it wasn't the best environment. My mom even felt uncomfortable too. And they knew that this wasn't a good a good environment for their children so my parents had to make the decision to move to puerto rico for about maybe two years so during that time i was in i believe in pre-k when i went to school and after my parents decided to move to puerto rico it was like a bit drastic change because all i ever knew was english and that was my first primary you know language and to have to go to a different type of island country where they don't speak any type of English and their dialect is strictly Spanish. It was very, very hard for me during those times. It was so crazy and all because 
I thought that maybe it would be, you know, cool, but at the same time, I was actually still scared because I was just young and I didn't expect to go from one place to another at a, such a young age. So when my parents moved, we moved in. My grandpa and grandma had a home for me and my mom and my dad, and they um, made a nice little house where my grandma and grandpa live. So in Puerto you live in Puerto Rico, the houses are very different. So I would say houses are like stacked up like in different sections, kind of like buildings, but they all set apart in a way. So if I had to describe it, let's say this whole big house, like this house right here up top is my grandma's, down here below is my aunt's, and then the house on the third floor, which is the last floor, is our home. So it was kind of like that. So it wasn't like such a difference because it was kind of sort of like the same thing in New York, just, just the environment, very different. So we moved in and I remember that I was crying because I didn't want to have to learn a new language. I mean, I understood Spanish. I just didn't know how to speak it. So it was very struggling for me. And also I was scared because I didn't know what to expect and what others would think of me because I didn't know the language. So I remember my mom's sister saying that I had to just get over it because I'm Hispanic, I'm Puerto Rican, and I have to learn regardless. Like I'm here in Puerto Rico and there's basically no way out of not being able to speak my first language. Now I have to speak another language. So for a while, I and my sisters, well, my older sister, she was able to grasp pretty quickly because she was just, she was a fast, you know, learner. Me, it took me a while. I struggled a lot with learning and as well as I also had a learning disability. So it took me a while for me to learn Spanish, but then slowly I started to learn Spanish when I started going to school. And my mom used to have like this CD that she would put on a computer back then and she would uh, make me practice that CD and it would have just only Spanish stuff and it was like Spanish game. And I used to love that game so much because I learned so much from that game. Like if it weren't for that game, for my mom to, to have bought it, I would have been struggling even more with Spanish. But once I started playing that game, started getting like the concept of it, my mom was able to put me in school. And it was the most scariest thing because I wasn't really ready for school. And in my mom's side of the family, they're more like so tough because they expect for you to like toughen up and to go out there and they just push you and expect for you to get along and, and know the world. When you barely just a little kid, you don't even know like what's going on. So my first time going to school was just my older sister and me. And I, gonna be honest, I did not have any friends. When I went, I thought that maybe that would change. I'll be able to get friends and no, that was actually the opposite. I hated that I had to adapt to this lifestyle simply because my parents had to move from one place to another. And I went to school, like I said, I didn't have any friends. My sister and I, we struggled a lot because a lot of people in Puerto Rico, I'm just gonna be very honest, Maybe if you experience this, then you know, um, they don't like outsiders, especially if you weren't born in Puerto Rico. So if you're an outsider and you migrated or you were born in America, they consider you as a American or like some Mexicanos that they'll say that they're like gringos. They consider me a gringa or AKA a no sabo kid and they don't like that. So mind you me, I never discriminate, I actually was very friendly, very sweet, and I was scared. I, I didn't know what to expect and who was gonna talk to me, who wasn't, and it was very, very hard those couple of years for, for me specifically. And a lot of kids will make fun of me. Every day I would go to school because they would tell me that I am not from Puerto Rico, aka, in Spanish, they'll be like, ah, esta nena no sabe nada, ella es un gringa, que se cree que ella lo sabe, and they would just make fun of me, and it would hurt me, and I remember that I used to internalize that. I don't 
remember me crying about it but i just know that i couldn't tell my mom because my mom at the time she didn't understand how i felt as a child so with that being said my mom would just tell me like what my aunt said just get over it and and learn to adapt and that's what i did i had to learn to adapt which sucked because i didn't just only had to adapt and get along with these people and learn spanish i also had bullies like i remember there was a time where when i was going to school i had failed a class and they held me back and my mom had to go to the school and try to get me back in my same grade so that i was able to be in the same grade because in puerto rico actually if you are let's say you're you're 17 in puerto rico they would bump you up to a grade for you to graduate faster but you have to like they actually go over their studies and things like that much quicker than in america america they kind of go slower but in puerto rico they're pretty quick and you get to be in a, a different grade that's not your year if you get where i'm coming from so that was me at the beginning and then i failed and all the kids they went up a grade and my mom didn't agree to that so my mom tried to get tutors and someone to help me so that I was able to get that help because of me struggling with my language barrier and I was able to get back into my grade level there was like these two girls that used to always make fun of me and I don't understand why was that the case because at the time you know around that you don't necessarily known about the word bully but now in this generation and now we do know what bullies are so like i was saying these girls they just knew off the bat that i wasn't i wasn't from here i mean i was different from them and they automatically used to make fun of me there was a time where i had to use the restroom so bad and i remember there was no door handle but because i had to go really bad because i didn't want to pee on myself the door handle kind of opened and the stall was like cracked which Obviously, I thought it was just a little bit weird that people would look at you and start laughing, which is what those girls did. Like, they seen me and they automatically started making fun of me. And it hurt me so bad that I started to cry. And I remember telling my cousin about it because at the time, my cousin, he was known in the school a lot. So everybody knew him. And one thing about my cousin is if you talk about a family member of his, he will defend you. And in this case, I just felt so mad and so guilty and, and I felt so sad inside because they were making fun of me. So I told my cousin and then my cousin was able to talk to these girls and basically like tell them like, you're wrong for what you did and yada, yada, yada. And after that, the girls, they never messed with me again. But then after that year, I had a teacher that she was known to hit kids and I didn't want to be around this teacher. She was very problematic and I tried to be as good as possible. There was a time I did something that she was like she expected me to do right away and I'm how am I supposed to know like I'm coming from a different country and you're expecting for me to know something quick like no. So I didn't know she got upset and she hit me and then that's when I got upset and I took my name tag off and then she was like telling me why are you crying and I didn't want to answer her because I was upset. I was like why would you hit me you're not even my mom. And so that lady was like at that time they had in Puerto Rico they check your teeth to make sure that your teeth are clean you need any like dental work or things like that they will send out like a letter or something where the parent has to take their kid to go get seen or they have like a place where you can go and get checked and get a cleaning I didn't do it because I was just very upset so then the next day I told my mom about it and I told that the teacher had hit me and during that time my mom sometimes she wasn't always a hundred percent on my side and that day i can remember that she was and i thank god that she was on my side because i told my mom that she hit me and my mom wasn't so okay with that because she's like there should not be no teacher putting their hands on you like out of who she thinks she so is my mom was like we'll go to the school and i'll have a conversation so my mom goes and has that conversation with the teacher alone and she just told me to wait outside 
so while i'm waiting outside i'm just literally just watching like what's going on and my mom comes back outside and she tells me she's like your teacher's saying that you're making stuff up and that she didn't hit you and i looked at my mom dead in her face and i was like mommy she hit me like she hit me in my butt and i'm not lying to you like this lady does this and she hits other kids i have witnessed and seen her do it with other kids so my mom was the type of mom that was very strict and she didn't play so my mom got very upset and she went back inside and she told the lady that if she put her hands on me that she was gonna have an issue with my mom and my mom basically told her that she would drag her so basically the school didn't like us and then um, the hello kitty situation they thought that i stole it i had to go and confirm and tell my sister did i steal this dacha this was yours dacha's my sister and my sister was like no that's yours and ever since then like they just didn't like us i remember there was a time where my sister got bullied too she literally said that there was a boy because my sister has curly hair we all have like this texture hair sometimes my hair does get a little nappy here and there but my hair is very different like my hair right now i blow dried it so it's like really nice and straight but my hair is wavy and curly and well all three of my sisters they all have curly hair and they get it from my dad's side of the family so we don't have like straight hair like what they expect for some puerto ricans to look they expect for them to look like a spaniard with straight hair um nice straight indian hair and just very perfect and because they didn't see us like that they consider us morenas which is like um brown skin and they used to tell my sister that she looked like a cucaracha which means in english cockroach and the little boy would make fun of her and he used to make a song about her and when she told my mom about it my mom was not happy and you know my mom had to go and have a talk with the principal about that because that's discrimination like why are they making fun of my sister because of her hair and my sister all her life she's always had that issue because my mom doesn't have her texture hair and a lot of my mom's side of the family they don't understand that curly hair is really beautiful it's just a lot that you have to maintain it a lot and you have to take care of it because it's a lot of things you have to put in it for it to be curly she didn't know my dad he had curly hair but then his hair fell off so it was hard for my dad to kind of like do his research and stuff because he would work and then my dad he was with us in puerto rico up until i think a second year he had to move because he wanted us to find a better place and he didn't think that puerto rico was going to be our official home so he found a job at the airport in atlanta georgia and my mom and my dad had to make a decision and they were like well i'll stay here with the kids and i'll let them finish the whole year and then when you finish we'll move out if you find a place we'll move and that's exactly what happened my dad did that and we were able to finish the year off in puerto rico and we were able to move to atlanta georgia and mind you i was about five and six years old when i lived in puerto rico and then when i moved to georgia i was pretty much seven years old so once i was seven years old i went to an elementary school in my county um at middle school in my county and high school in my county so where we were at the beginning we lived in some apartments in atlanta and there's a county that maybe some of you may know if you live in the atlanta area i was from clayco so um where i first lived was called high park and then from there i went to rex and then i am um, all my life i lived there in clayco so clayco was basically my home if you were to ask me like where am i from and i ever tell you like clayco or atlanta that's my home because brooklyn wasn't really my home i only lived there for about maybe a couple years and i don't remember a lot of stuff because i was just a little girl i think when you originated from one place and you don't know too much then it's hard for you to say that oh yeah i'm from you know here even though i will always say i'm a new yorker i'm a new yorican because i'm puerto rican but i wasn't born in puerto rico but both of my parents are but no i'm an az alien for life because i basically grew up my whole entire life in atlanta 
till today. So while I'm doing that, you already know I'm gonna use my Laura Mercier. To elementary, I got to know a few people that I met later on in my high school, some people in my middle school, and that will be for another story time. I want to bring a really, really fun guest that she is my friend and we've grown so much to the point where her and I are so surprised with each other and I'm so proud of her of how far she came and there's just exciting things that I want to share with you guys but I don't want to spoil the surprise just yet so just stay tuned for that but if you guys want a story time with my shitty shitty school and about me and how I was raised let me know and I can give you guys a story time about that. I do have some dark humor slash childhood trauma as well. And that will be for another time because I we will need tissue for those days. I came here when I was seven and then I went to school. And I started to remember my English and my Spanish, but I started to mix it up once I came back to America. So my teachers would get a little bit confused, and I remember that I was placed in ESOL, which is a class for students that came from a different country, don't know the language, so they have to take a class in order for them to learn English. That way they don't get confused. But my mom was like, you guys are American, y'all were born in the United States, so you don't need to take this class. So my mom took me out, and still i was struggling and i remember that i was in my right grade and then this one white teacher um at the end my parents couldn't do nothing about it because it was kind of like quick and she failed me because i didn't i couldn't understand or comprehend what she was talking about whenever they would go over certain studies and things like that i was having such a really hard time because i had a learning disability that my mom still didn't know about struggling because it was hard for me to understand to concept everything and you know when you are a child that goes from one country from America to then a Spanish country and then coming back to America that can really mess you up like for me it messed me up a lot because it was just a language barrier that you got to constantly still be reminded and remembered and if you forget those things then people are going to be like like wait hold up so my spanish and my english i would twist it all the time and it would kind of be like spanglish like if i would talk to you right now i would literally say yeah because you know my tia or my titi that would be what i would say to people and sometimes some people would just look at me crazy and they'd be like what's she talking about because i didn't know that we had to talk English again now, now that we came back. Today we're just gonna be using some glowy products. I'm not even gonna do a whole full beat. We probably have to do a full beat for a next time because I don't want this video to be too long. I can go on and on with my story. But I'm just gonna use a little bit of the Dior highlighter and I'm just gonna place it right above my high cheekbones. So like right here and that's it. So yeah, I struggled and then my mom got me out, then they failed me, I was held back. So when I graduated, I graduated 2011, I am 31 years old. So if you do the math, I really was supposed to graduate 2010 of my class year. But because they failed me, I had to be held back, me and my younger sibling as well. So with that being said, I basically lived my entire life here i met my husband and then we had babies and then we got married later on because we didn't get married right away which i wish we would have got married before we had kids but you know god had a different plan for us and just that's just how things were if you ask me a question have i visited other countries i have visited mexico i haven't visited the north side of mexico but my parents they took us on vacation we have been to puerto vallarta cancun and consume de mexico and i love everything about mexico um my husband is chicano he is from atlanta he's an atlm so he's a great baby and his parents are also Mexican and they're from Monterrey. So I never been on that side of uh, Mexico. I will one day wish to go, see si Dios quiera. And other than that, like 
I just fell in love with Mexican food. I love Mexican like traditions. I love everything about it. Like if this my sister made, but I, if you know, you know. But I don't try to act because I know back then a lot of people used to think like she tried to act Mexican and stuff like that. No. And a lot of times people will confuse me and they will think that I'm Mexican. So my kids are mixed and you know, I, I'm very proud. I'm very proud that not only I'm Boricua, but you know, I also have my husband who is Mexican American and I just love the culture. I, I love everything about it, the food, the people, and it's just, it's very beautiful. So if you ask me if you're looking to go on vacation or something and you wanna have like a group go to Mexico, um, try different parts of Mexico. I know I wanna go to Mexico pretty soon, but I wanna go on vacation. I wanna have like a family vacation and then I also wanna do like a girls trip with my girls and go for maybe like a day three days and just like enjoy myself and do more vlogging and pictures because i do want to start posting a lot of pictures and not just pictures in my room like i want to be able to like show you guys like actual front photo long pictures of myself and use that as my portfolio to you know make it more professional and yeah i think that's the vacation part have i been to any other place besides mexico yes um, other than Puerto Rico, I've been to España, I went to Madrid, and I'm gonna be very honest, it wasn't my favorite. I told my parents we should have went to Barcelona because I'm a Barcelona fan and I also like football, uh, soccer, so I was always a soccer fan for Barcelona. My favorite soccer player was Xavi Hernandez, he already retired and yeah that's pretty much it madrid it was okay like i got to sightsee and see some of the things i wish that back then i knew vlogging then i would have been able to vlog but during that time it wasn't it wasn't about vlogging during those years like madrid was okay but other than that do i have any pets yes i have right now at the moment i have two pets and i'm trying to get rid of one because i don't think i'm gonna be able to handle it but my kids don't want me to she's a female and she's a pit and then i have my other dog diesel and he's a male pit and i don't think i have anything else oh if you ask me i love jesus christ so if you guys do want to have like any bible stories or um bible studies things like that let me know because i do love to share my time with jesus and i want to share my time and interact with other people who also want to get to know jesus that's jesus is a part of my life and everything that i do you know i always try to give back as much as i can even when i make mistakes or sometimes i question or whatever the case may be like god knows and that's one thing that I want to share with you guys and there's no judgment, no hate here. You know, everybody has their own opinion, but at the end of the day, I never want somebody to go home and feel like they're hated. Um, the next question will have to be, um, do I like books? Yes, I do. I honestly have a book that I, I stopped reading for a while and I never finished it. And it's a really good book because it also is very not religious and it's also like very interesting like i haven't finished it and i don't want nobody to finish it and then tell me the details but it's a really good book i love books if you ask me i am the type of girly that likes to read books go out grab coffee have brunch dates um picnics dancing things like that like i'm not into that anymore i used to be um, I think I've overgrown as get as I'm getting older and you know, I have to set a better example for my kids Don't get me wrong. I'm a cool mom. Like I can be a cool mom um, My husband knows that side of me, but sometimes I have to like control it because Theta can be a little bit A little bit crazy but a little bit fun because I've always been that way ever since I was so that's one thing about me and I love fashion. I've always used to watch my favorite shows. My favorite movie is Legally Blonde. And if you guys haven't seen my video that I posted with my hair, go check it out because I did use the sound for Legally Blonde. And 
I'm obsessed with that movie. If I could go blonde without like dyeing my hair so bad, I would literally do it because I feel like blonde is such a pretty color even though I know it's not our natural color to put on our hair but I just find it so pretty like I think it's very pretty and not all blondes are I'm gonna finish off with using I haven't even used this lip liner but we're gonna use it today it's the makeup by Mario lip liner in hue so I like that I love romantic, hopeless romantic movies. I also like movies that have like, where they go from a small town to like a big city or business, fashion, makeup, all those things. Like the other movies that I like to watch is The Devil Wears Prada, um, Teen Going on 30. Those are my favorite movies. If you ask me, I'm kind of like a white girl in a way inside sometimes, but I still like my hood movies. I like some really good good old movies like i assess with um what is it friday and some other comedians that i enjoy watching like there's so many movies that i enjoy watching i don't really like to watch too many like nudity things like that because um to be honest it's just not my forte and i f kind of find it a little bit awkward because it's like porn to me and i don't really like that do I drink? Yes, but I don't drink heavily. I'm not really a drinker. I don't really like drinking. I never liked drinking, even when I was like in my teenage years. Like I, I consider beer alcohol disgusting. And if I drink, I can have a little drink and just you know drink. But I don't like to drink heavily. I don't like to black out. I don't like to be too tipsy to the point where I don't know where I'm at. I'm just not that person. I never been and I like to be very safe or if I'm not drinking, I could be the DD driver while everybody else can do their thing and you know, I look out for others. So, that's just who I am. Um and another thing, do I smoke? No, I don't smoke. I used to smoke back then, but then after giving my life to Christ, you know, things have changed drastically, so I don't do those things. I don't judge nobody if they do, you know, that's you, whatever you want, but don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do get tested and I have temptation and sometimes there be times where I want to do it, but then I have to hold myself back and say, no, Tina, you don't need it. Music. Do I like music? I don't really listen to music. I used to listen to music a lot um i used to be a hardcore reggaetonera like the old vieja escuela like that was my thing um i love hip-hop r&b soulful music i used to sing don't ask me to sing because i'm not gonna sing I do like music i try to not listen too much to secular music because you already know it's just some things are not meant to be but um, other than that like i know karo g there's a lot of people that like her and i think she's very beautiful like she has her great personality i just don't listen to it a lot because it's just a little bit too much for my ears and if i feel a little convicted i just try not to listen to them but i mean i know that there's other music that's a lot cleaner and and whatnot but music with me i just don't listen to it a whole lot as i did in my younger years dancing i like to dance yes and after you know being a content creator things like that like i'm trying to get into it my oldest daughter wants me to start doing more tiktok dance with her and i still haven't had the time to do it but i'm gonna do one pretty soon with her because she's been wanting to do this one video but I'm not gonna lie, um, me trying to do these moves is not the same as when I was like 20, in my 20s, or when I was like 18, like I was able to move and stuff like that when I didn't have kids. But after you have kids, like it's a whole different ball game, like it's just way different. It's not the same. And what else? And yes, I am happily married with my husband and that's pretty much it for my Q&A. Question. So I'm gonna put this on first and then I'm gonna put my mascara for it last but other than that that is the last thing that I have for my Q&A and get to know me questions if you guys 
have more Q&A questions that you want me to do on this video and you want me to give you guys more story time, things about me, like let me know, comment down in the comment section. Guys, think and what we can relate to or things that you want me to talk about. It doesn't matter, even the personal ones, you guys can ask me like things for you as well, especially for the younger generation that have questions and wants to make better choices, better decisions and need advice on those things without you know feeling judgmental go ahead feel free and comment down and leave your questions and i'm always writing back to all my seguidoras my followers and if i don't get back to you don't feel discouraged i usually get back but you know i also have a busy life with my kids so just bear with me but other than that, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys got to enjoy this time with me. Q&A, getting to know me, Christina. Off here because I have to go. My tube here is hurting. I didn't want to make such a type of makeup because I actually got out the shower, blow dry my hair, and I might be taking this off pretty soon. I didn't feel like doing my brows, so we're going to leave them like this. I think they look cute either way. You gotta learn how to embrace your brows without doing too much but in my next video if you guys do want me to do a makeup tutorial get ready with me or a chit chat or things that you have any questions for please comment down and don't forget to subscribe people please subscribe do not be afraid i do not bite i am a sweetheart and i love to interact with you guys so Follow, subscribe, comment, and like this channel. I appreciate everything that you guys do and all the love that you give in return because it just makes my heart happy. So I'll leave it off here. Thank you so much. Mucho besito. Dios lo bendiga. And I'll see you guys next time on my next video.